uh, when I was riding Rio, I noticed he was limping and um, he seemed a little sore in his right foot. And I uh, was working with a trainer and he had suggested to have Rich take a look at it. Rio came to us in 1999 or 2000. He came to us with an extensive process injury and at the time he wasn't, um, he wasn't sore. Uh, just to the hoof testers uh, a slight bit, but he didn't travel well. And so they called us up to take a look at it. And we found that um, the injury was and everyone's opinion was probably advanced. This is a foot of a normal horse and if you look here the extensor process is normal and smooth and rounded. This um, tendon coming down the front of the leg is the extensor, extensor tendon that inserts on that extensor process. What's happened here due to trauma or strain or injury is that this portion of the coffin bone is actually fragmented and avulsed off of the rest of the coffin bone. The extensor tendon comes down and attaches here and as you can see this hoof is uh, very deformed and forms a, a point and um, the, uh, the way that he was shod wasn't allowing him to travel very well and the foot was, uh, was uh, quite a bit more deformed than this and uh, so it was, uh, we decided to radiograph it. What we're looking for is um, degree of healing and calcification and sometimes these will not completely calcify across and you can see this area of lysis or lack of bony um, growth right there. What we probably have is some fibrous union or essentially scar tissue going on there instead of complete calcification. The radiograph showed that there was uh, some damage to the extensor process at the time. We um, decided that natural balance principles should be applied to this foot to allow him to uh, to try and regain some function and allow him to hopefully travel better and be more comfortable. Uh, our local veterinarian, Dr. John Erfel, uh, a few years ago had approached me with this idea for a horse that had ring bone. Uh, it was a, a ring bone in the lower leg or arthritis. and. Uh, the idea was was to allow the horse to be able to walk on this round stock that was on the inside of the shoe so anywhere that he placed that his foot it would always move and rock and and our hope was was to relieve the bone column quite a bit I believe it's very important and that they do a lot of. They work real well together, and it's, it's been a big, a big impact on Rio and his success. We can't get along without each other. So sometimes we, we lock horns, and we think we, the veterinarian has got the advanced degree and is supposed to know all this stuff. But when it comes right down to it, the farrier is the guy underneath the horse and the one who knows the hands-on aspect of it. He, he's the artist and uh, we got to work together. It does work. It works both ways. We've done a lot of, we've done a lot of horses together. Yeah. <laughs> and we, um, and sometimes it, you know, you have to rely on, on a veterinarian to explain sometimes function and how, how the foot works. One of the other things that, that I've learned is not to try to communicate with the farrier through the owner. Because as soon as I write something down and, and make out a diagram and say this is how it's done, it takes away all the, the give and take that come, can happen between the farrier and the veterinarian. Oh, at this point, we've got an arthritic horse has pain in that, that coffin joint and we don't have a whole lot of options as far as what to do for him. Uh, we've put some injections of hyaluronic acid and steroid in the joint that gave him some relief. Uh, various shoeing techniques, basically raising the lower of the heel, trying to find a sweet spot where he was happiest. 
The reason why we want the heel to hit first is we always want the back of the foot to be involved in landing and then loading. Within the, within the inside of the foot, the navicular bone, if, if the back of the foot is involved, the frog and the back of the foot, as that back of the foot hits, the navicular bone is able to then move up into place in order to, so that the bone column can accept the load of the horse. There's the landing phase, the loading phase, and then the breakover phase. And so what we like to see is the heel first landing. Then we know we have, we're, we're helping that foot to function. If we shoe a horse and this horse walks off stubbing its toe, we know that we have made some kind of mistake. We need to make an adjustment in order for this horse to be able to function properly. If, if we don't have the foot functioning properly or we've created a dysfunction, dysfunction will eventually lead to some type of pathology that we have to, we would then have to address and we're here to not cause dysfunction or begin pathologies. We're here to try and help these horses to function as normally as possible in a uh, domestic situation. He was about a, a grade three lame when the last time I saw him. And, uh, it's at least one grade improved, if not close to two. About a year and a half ago was when he was limping and sore and uh, lame, and when we took him in for x-rays, it had pretty much tripled in size. That's what was creating the discomfort. So Rich, and Dr. Erpel have been working with him, uh, using new device to help Rio for life. But he'll have to wear a special shoe for the rest of his life to help him. My goodness, that is really nice. Okay, big fella, let's go the other way now. We'll turn into that affected leg. One more time. Very nice. Okay, so I think that what I would like to do is to pull that shoe off and let him stand around a little while without the shoe and then repeat this and just see how he moves. So he's had that shoe off maybe 15 or 20 minutes and he's a bit more lame. The question is if he wasn't wearing it for a week then how sound would he be? I don't think he'd be uh... I don't think he'd do very well at all. He's, um, now he's real off. He doesn't like that at all. I, I asked John for another radiograph because our past radiographs uh, that we've had, uh, I had a different length of foot and a different, um, from the tip of the frog to the, to the plane of the sole. Uh, this one is quite a bit deeper, but I feel I'm getting too close and uh, I don't want to get him too close. So I asked John for, uh, another radiograph to make sure that I'm uh, still within <coughs> the parameters that we need to be about getting him too close or getting him uh, sore on this foot. So that's why I wanted to do that. So he's better than he was without the shoe, but he's not as good as he was when he came in. Yeah. But he's yeah. had a lot done to him today too. So. I imagine in a day or two he'll he'll come right out of that. So we may need a, a day to, or a week to adjust. At this point, you know, he's definitely better with the shoe on, but he's not as good as when he came in. So uh, if we want to look at him again in, in a, a week or something, then mm -hmm. Maybe bring him back in and run him around and, and see how he is. I'm going to bet he's back to where he was when he came in. I think it's just going to take a little bit of time to get comfortable again.
Rio is doing really uh, super with this new technique Dr. Erfel and Rich Clark are using on him. It's been a great success with him. And I'm looking forward to uh, riding him in the next uh, event that we're going to have, the next rodeo, in about two weeks. Yeah, there was a point where uh, Rio was in such pain that he just couldn't walk on his foot. He just uh, would do anything but put pressure on that. They just all worked together to make it a better uh, shoe for him to help him perform better and to not be in pain. And so with this whole new technique they're using, it had tripled in size, but it, it's working great. It's somehow helping him to where he's comfortable.